Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to this Spotfire tutorial brought to you by Datafuel. My name is Kyle Lamata, and today I'll be showing you how to load data on demand with markings. Simply selecting points on a map chart to load data from a different database. Data on demand is ideal when you're connecting to a large data source that would be time consuming to load or reduce the performance of your Spotfire project. The data set that I'm using is public natural gas production data from the state of Oklahoma. In this example, I'm going to connect to two SQL tables that are in two separate databases. Table 1 is a summary table with one row for every well record. This is commonly called a one line table or a well header table. This table has about 17,000 rows. Table 2 contains detailed monthly gas production data for every well in Table 1. Each well can have 4 to 500 records, and therefore Table 2 has many more rows, over 8 million. Importing the entire table would take a while and probably slow down my computer. Therefore, I'm going to use Data on Demand to only show data for wells that I select on the map. This will reduce the size of Table 2 and speed up my project. I'll start with the blank Spotfire project and add a new connection to a Microsoft SQL Server. My server path and authentication settings are preloaded, so I'm going to connect to this data source and then select my database from the dropdown. The first table is going to be this well header information, which has about 17,000 rows. So I'll load this view, uh, deselect any columns that I don't need, and then click OK to finish loading this data into Spotfire, making sure to import the data table instead of keeping it external. So after I click OK, we can take a look at this data. And we see that this has header information with columns such as API number, uh, section, township, and range, lease name, operator, and things like that. So let me rename this page. And then we'll add our second data table, which is going to be the more detailed monthly production information. And this is also going to be from a SQL server. So I'll set up a new connection because we're connecting to a new database and select that database from the dropdown, and then click OK. Now I'll choose the view from the database, which is the Oklahoma monthly production, verify that it's bringing in all the columns that I expect, and then click OK. I'll also import this data table, rename it, and then click OK. So this database has over 8 million rows so loading this is going to take a long time, which for this video I've sped up so we don't have to sit here for several minutes and watch it load 8 million different records. So once this data finally loads, we can look at the bottom of Spotfire and see that it's got 8.1 million rows, which took a long time to load. So in the future, to avoid having to load all of this data, I'm going to use Data on Demand to only load rows that I specify from Table 1. And we know that Table 1 and Table 2 have the same API number column which identifies the well records and we can use this column from table 1 to select the wells that we want to load in table 2. To do that I'll go to the data table properties, select the monthly production table and then hit settings where it says type of data and we're going to switch it from loading all data at once to loading data on demand. I also want to load this data automatically that way when we make a selection it automatically loads the data and doesn't force us to manually refresh the table. So at this point, I'm not actually going to specify any conditions, but just click OK. And what we see is that this table becomes empty because we haven't specified any criteria on which data to load. So in just a minute, we'll need to go back to the data on demand settings and specify the conditions of when to load data. But first, I want to configure these two different visualizations. We'll use a map chart to select the wells that we want to see production data for. So on this map chart, I'm going to be using the header table and positioning these points with their API number and the longitude and latitude. So I'll go to the settings for this map chart property, click on layers, select the header layer, and then edit the settings for the positioning properties. We'll scroll down to the bottom and choose the longitude and latitude coordinate columns from this table.
After we do that, I'm going to change the size by to remove this API County size selection. Make the markers a little bit smaller. And then color by the operator name so that we can see the different operators that have wells in this area. So I'll scroll down until I see the operator column and select that for the color by. So now we're positioning points on this map from our header table, which has about 17,000 rows. But I want to see the detailed monthly production data for each one of these wells, but that data exists in our table two. So I'll insert a line chart and I'll configure this line chart for the production data table, which is currently empty. So I'll put month on the X axis. And we'll show the gas production on the Y axis. But because we specified data on demand and haven't specified conditions in which to load this data, this chart is going to be empty. Even if I select points on the map, the chart on the right is not going to update until we specify that condition in the data on demand. So we'll do that by going back to the data table properties, clicking on the settings for the data on demand. And we know that these two tables are related through their API number. So I wanted to find an input on that API number. And data on demand has several different options that we can choose. We could specify a fixed value, a range of values. We could use filters. Uh, but in this example, I'm actually going to use markings to limit data. That way, when we mark something on the map chart, it will load the related rows with the same API number in table two. And now after we do that, the wells that have been selected on the map chart on the left, we can see the daily production information for those selected wells in the line chart on the right. And we can look at this table and see that there's only 55,000 rows that have been returned of the total 8.1 million. Therefore, our Spotfire project will perform a lot better because we're only working with 55,000 rows instead of 8.1 million rows. And now we'll just change some settings in this line chart to show one color for every operator and one line for every API number, which represents each well. Or within this line chart, I can click on different lines to see the production trends for different wells, or I can mark different operators from the color legend to see all of the wells that belong to that operator for the wells that have been selected on the map chart. If we want to see a different group of wells, it's really simple. We'll just come back over to our map chart. We can even zoom in a little bit, select a few wells on the map, and then see the monthly production information update on the chart on the right. So after I make this selection, Spotfire is actually requerying the database and only returning rows from our production table that have the same API number for those wells that have been selected on the map chart on the left. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. For additional Spotfire tutorials, check out my blog at datafuel.co forward slash blog, which is linked in the notes below. Thanks and have a great day.